Hey guys, today I want to share with you my updated pregnancy skincare routine for morning and evening. My name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently in my second trimester. Obviously with pregnancy, I need to make some changes with my skincare routine. I want to share that with you guys because I got a lot of requests, at least on my social media, about what I have been using. Now just to give you guys a little background, my skin concerns or how I approach skincare is is really focused on anti-aging now that I'm, I'm in my late 30s, but I am also prone to acne and hyperpigmentation. So I really focus on products and ingredients that helps me to target those concerns. My skin is also more combination in the summertime, but tend to get more dry and sensitive during the winter. And right now, well, I should say my first trimester, I experienced quite a bit of acne flare as well as skin sensitivity in the sense where I think the mask at work had something to do with with it, but my skin, especially where the mask would sit at work, really would burn with a lot of products that I, in the past, was able to use with no problem. Things have certainly gotten better, but because of that, I did have to make some changes, at least during my first trimester. And so I wanna share with you the changes I've made. Okay, so let's start with the morning routine. Because I tend to use a thicker moisturizer at night, sometimes I would even slug, I usually go in with a gentle cleanser. Certainly you don't have to cleanse at all, you can just use a little bit of water, but I like to use a little creamy gentle cleanser, non-foaming to remove the things I put on my skin before. So my vitamin C serum and the other things I put on my skin has a better opportunity to penetrate. And so right now I really have been loving this one from The Clog and it's the double action exfoliating cleanser that contains a little bit of alpha hydroxy acid, so lactic and glycolic acid, as well as salicylic acid. And so salicylic acid, as I mentioned in my previous video, is absolutely very safe to use in a cleanser form. And this is just a really Really nice creamy cleanser just to kind of start off my day and also with the ingredients you get a little bit of you know dental exfoliation to remove some of that dead skin buildup and improve your complexion so the next thing I do which if you guys know me is gonna be my vitamin C serum I've been trying various different formulations these days mostly because my holy grail skin SkinCeuticals vitamin C has been a little bit more uncomfortable for me to use so I've been more going towards the more lipid soluble DHT score because with that formulation, it's a little bit more creamier, lighter serum than say the watery based serum that tends to sting. One I have been really enjoying and using is from April Skin, Vitamin ACE Brightening Serum. April Skin is a Korean beauty brand and their products are really formulated geared towards sensitive skin. And so I really, I've talked about actually their Artemisia Squalane Moisturizer. That's a great lightweight gel cream formulation. And this serum is really nice and hydrating. Rating. It is 20% vitamin C with along with other antioxidants. And it's got this more creamier, lighter lotion, watery, lighter lotion formulation that has not burned out my skin. So I really have been using this one every morning. Another one that I have been using is this one, the Image Skincare Vitamin C. And this again is more is formulated with more lipid soluble vitamin C that is in a creamier formulation. And again, the switch is mostly because my skin has just been super sensitive. Um, but also I like to try various different vitamins. Vitamin C's. And in general, I find that formulations that contains that lipid soluble vitamin C is better tolerated when your skin is sensitive or just in general, it's more suitable for those with sensitive skin. So after my vitamin C, on days where I feel like I'm going to be in mass for long periods of time or my skin's just extra dry, I actually like to go in with a hydrating serum. And the one that I've been using a really appreciating and working well for me is from Vichy Mineral 89 Prebiotic Concentrate. This one is nice because it's got niacinamide at 4%. So niacinamide also helps to brighten, helps to repair your skin barrier, also helps a little bit with acne, which, you know, being pregnant, you certainly don't have like the option of using retinoids that I would be my, like one of my first line go-to. So this one I would use in the morning, mostly to defend against all the env environmental aggressors and the long day that my skin is going to be under a mask. And Vichy actually has done quite a bit of clinical studies that really have shown that this is really helpful in protecting and strengthening your skin barrier when it comes to like external stressors like pollution, sun, and other irritants. So this one has um, niacinamide as well as a prebiotic concentrate that helps again just to soothe and calm everything. So this is not every single morning but I feel like if my skin needed a little extra I will kind of put a pumpful of this on my face. But otherwise after my vitamin C serum I will go ahead and treat with my azelaic acid and I do have the 15% prescription. So here's my 
my Phoenicia, my 15%, that is going to be helpful in fighting acne. That's very safe to use. And if you also suffer from acne postmarks or melasma, this is another one that you can safely use that's fairly effective. And if I do have a little acne that I feel the need to spot treat, I would either put on a little acne patch after my sunscreen to kind of protect that little pimple from rubbing against my mask. Otherwise, I will go in and spot treat with like a little salicylic acid gel. And there are a lot of great ones that are available. This is just one that I have on hand from Tula. It's the clear up gel that's 2% salicylic acid. And you guys remember salicylic acid when used in limited amounts, it's safe. And so spot treating here and there is 100% okay. So this is what I do if I have like a raging pimple that I wanted to really get under control. If you have more sensitive skin, you certainly try the one from CeraVe. This one is the acne control gel that contains a blend of AHA and BHA. Again, 2% salicylic acid. That's a little bit more on the hydrating side. And then I just go in with my moisturizer and sunscreen. So I like to switch off my moisturizer in the morning, especially because now it's a little bit more humid. I have been using less thick moisturizers in the morning. The morning moisturizer that I have been using these days is from Vanna Cream. Daily facial moisturizer with hyaluronic acid and ceramides. And this is really nice because in general, Vanna Cream is a line that's designed for those with eczema and sensitive skin. And this is a really lightweight, fast absorbing moisturizer. It doesn't feel heavy or sticky. I think it's a great one for those who have like combination skin who want to have a like a moisturizer that's just reliable to use all year round. Certainly if you have oily skin, you could probably use this one as your nighttime moisturizer, like especially in the colder months. But I really like the way it feels on my skin. If I feel like my skin needs a little bit more of like a pick me up, that's a little bit more hydrating and a little bit more rich, but not super heavy. One that I have been loving this year is from Goodall, their apricot collagen youth firming cream. And this is a really good morning and really evening moisturizer. It's got this nice wicked gel cream texture, but still very lightweight and nourishing. So I've really been using this at night, but in the morning on certain days when my skin is just extra kind of dry, I find this one to be a really nice one because with the way it's formulated, it still doesn't feel very heavy or sticky on my skin. So after my moisturizer, I will go in with my sunscreen. And the one that I have just been loving, loving, absolutely loving these days, and I'm actually almost done, is from Beauty of Jason, their Rice Plus Probiotic SPF 50 MPA 4 Plus. And this is just such a nice nourishing, but yet so lightweight. And certainly if you have oily and combination skin, you probably could even skip the moisturizer step and just go with this. It's such lightweight and it just absorbs so nicely and quickly. And it's got amazing new filters, chemical filters that we don't have here readily available here in the US, but more prevalent in like Asia and Europe. And this, I feel 100% safe using chemical filters like these during pregnancy. I have no problem using mineral or chemical sunscreen when I'm pregnant and I'm happy to go in that. And I've talked about that on my social media in the past, but sunscreens in general, period, regardless of the filter is safe to use during pregnancy. And so that is a really, really nice one. But if I, again, on days where my skin is just like extra sensitive and I need a little bit more hydration, I will use this one from Coco Kine. I've really been um, enjoying this one, the daily SPF 32, and this is purely mineral, so zinc oxide. It is more on the hydrating side. So for those with more oily combination skin, you may find this slightly more shiny afterwards, if you will, but it doesn't leave a white cast. It goes on pretty nice and elegant. So that's like the one I would wear if I need a little bit more moisturization to prevent that water loss from my uh, through my skin. So that's pretty much it for my morning routine. My evening routine is again, mostly focused on treating and the concerns of wrinkles, fine lines, and also if there's any acne, really focusing on that as well. And so the first thing I do is because I wear a lot of sunscreen and reapply throughout the day, also wear a lot of water resistant makeup, eye makeup, as I go in with my cleansing balm. So I'm a big fan of double cleansing. I've been really loving this one from Naturium, their purple ginseng cleansing balm. This is a really nice one that I will go in to remove everything. And then the next step, you guys know, if you know me, is my has to be my Benzoyl Peroxide Cleanser from CeraVe. Literally have gone through, I don't even know how many tubes of these, probably like five or six. And I just put on a little bit on my face, leave it on for probably like three to five minutes. What I do, the trick here is leave it on for that short contact time for it to work. But I will go ahead and brush my teeth. So after brushing my teeth, I know it's a good amount of time for that Benzoyl Peroxide to work. And I just rinse it off. And that's really my double cleansing routine to help remove everything, cleanse my skin, and also treat the acne that I have. The next step I will do is basically, because I can't use a retinoid anymore, I have substituted my retinoid with 
essentially two ingredients that's going to help improving fine lines, wrinkles, or at least you know minimizing that in, in treating. So one is a peptide treatment, another one is an alpha hydroxy acid based treatment. Certainly, you can use the two at the same time. I find that it's going to be in general tolerable than say using a retinoid and an alpha hydroxy acid. But I certainly can't. I'm not a person that can use an alpha hydroxy acid on a nightly basis. So what I typically do is I will use my peptide treatment every night and then maybe like every other night or every times a week, I will go in either with a glycolic acid overnight treatment or a lactic acid treatment. And because my skin has been more sensitive these days, I certainly have been going more with the lactic acid than the glycolic acid. So my holy grail peptide product is from Elastin. And I've talked about this before. And certainly if you want to learn more about peptides, how they work and my recommended products, I do have a video on that. And certainly you can feel free to check that out. It certainly is not cheap, but certainly highly recommend checking it out. But the two that I really recommend that's like a peptide serum is their regenerating nectar as well as the restorative complex. I mean, essentially these are the same thing. Only difference is the nectar is a primer like formulation. And it was really initially designed to use post procedural like a resurfacing laser that can be used right away to help skin heal as well as to really kind of uh, synergistically work to improve the treatment that you just received. Because this doesn't contain water, it certainly doesn't burn. So I have been using more of this the first trimester because interestingly enough, I used to always use this, but for some reason during the first trimester, this just burned like crazy on my skin. So they're otherwise very similar. They're pretty much the same thing. So every night I will use this as my peptide treatment. And then, you know, like I said, every other day or a few times, times a week, I will go in with an alpha hydroxy acid treatment. I really have been loving the one from Peach and Lily, their um, lactic acid repair serum that contains lactic acid, a blend of other plant derived extracts. And it's a nicer cream formulation and lactic acid is better for sensitive skin. And certainly this one has not burned on my skin. In general, alpha hydroxy acids can create that transient like burning sensation on the skin. And certainly that's something that I was not wanting since my skin was already pretty sensitive. And this one I had no problems using, at least for me personally. So I really like this one. And I used it like, you know, like three times a week. Now that my skin has gotten less sensitive with um, that now being in my second trimester, I have gone back to switching out and certainly still using the lactic acid, but kind of going up onto the glycolic acid overnight treatment, mostly because kind of when it comes to like efficacy of improving fine lines and wrinkles and skin texture and skin tone. Really glycolic acid is where the money's at when it comes to like anti-aging. So one I've been loving is from Medigate. It's their uh, sleep glycolic time release AHA overnight treatment. And this is a nice cream formulation. It kind of slightly burns when you first put on like most alpha hydroxy acid treatments, but this is a nice creamy formulation that I find that tends to be a little bit better tolerated than some of the more runny or serums. And so I would put this on again, maybe like two, three times a week as my overnight treatment. After my peptide treatment, alpha hydroxy acid, I will go in with my azelaic acid again if I feel the need to treat acne. And certainly this azelaic acid in general is really intended to be used and can be used twice daily. So you certainly don't have to, but I sometimes may use it, may not. But if I have active breakout, this is one that I will kind of go to. And then because like I said, my skin has been more sensitive, I have been switching to a moisturizer that's more calming and soothing, but also not using like those super thick, creamy, ultra duty, heavy moisturizers. So one that I found is kind of a good like intermediate is one from Cetaphil. I really love this one. Their night moisturizer redness relief. I actually have used this one for many years, even though I personally don't struggle a lot with redness or say suffer from rosacea, which is really what this product is intended. But the reason why I love it is because it's nourishing, it's moisturizing, and it doesn't burn on my skin, at least for me. And it contains all great ingredients that helps with calming your skin, calming the redness irritation. So it contains niacinamide, shea butter, it has licorice root and caffeine as well. So all the great ingredients are helpful for calming and soothing irritated skin. And then lastly, something that is nice, 
but not necessary is an eye cream. And so what I have been using lately is the one from It Cosmetics, their new confidence in an eye cream. And this just contains a blend of peptides. Again, just want to make sure that your eye cream doesn't contain retinol as many eye creams can. That's kind of like a very hydrating, but glides on your skin very, very nicely to help with fine lines and crows. And eye cream is something, again, as I mentioned, it's not necessary, but certainly something that I started adding into my routine in my like mid thirties, just as a part of my anti-aging regimen. All right, guys. So that is a quick rundown of my pregnancy morning and evening routine to help target my concerns of fine lines, wrinkles, acne, and dry and sensitive skin. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comment below and let me know what products you're currently using if you are expecting. Again, you can find more of me on my social media on TikTok as well as Instagram, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.